to me, I told myself this, right? No matter what happens, no matter whether my bills are due, yeah. no matter if I'm sleeping outside, no matter if, if they're kicking me out of the house, yeah. don't you ever, ever, ever shoot a music video less than this price. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Shutter Talk. We're here with Anisi. Okay. Um, on the podcast, finally had this man. I met this guy three weeks ago, I would say, yes, at, at Rito, and we just talked. We talked over a coffee. Mm -hmm. um, and he's a cool guy. He's a music video man, or I'd say just video producer, music but video. specifically yeah. music video, right? Uh, well, music videos. Um, uh, what else? Commercials. Yeah, okay. He's just, uh, well, we're going to say video producer. You do a lot video of video production. work, right, right, and right. he has his own video production company, Dope. Cap Studio, dope, dope quality, production. dope quality productions, because okay. it's dope quality. Mm -hmm. um, but we're here. We're gonna interview him a bit, and we're gonna talk about you know what we think of the whole creative industry. So we're gonna start with uh, you quickly. Just introduce yourself um, and tell us where you grew up, how you grew up, and yeah, that kind of thing. Yeah, well, um, <laughs> <laughs> takes us for the the tea. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. It's okay, I'm <laughs> sipping my tea. Yeah. Um. Yeah. My name is uh, Bainino Amisi. Like I always go by like my second name. Cause really? My last name because people don't really know understand how to pronounce my. Oh, so you just want an easier name. kind of thing? Yeah, easier. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I I I, uh, I was born in Congo. Congo. Yeah, Republic Democratic of Congo. Okay. But then I grew up in um, in the Burundi. In Burundi, like southeast uh, uh, Congo. Congo. Right. Um. So yeah, I, I when did you much when, when did you come to to Canada? So I came to Canada in two thousand eleven. Two thousand eleven. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's when I got here. Yeah. How um, old were you? I was I think I was sixteen. Sixteen years old. Yeah, sixteen years old. How how is that translation from the Congo to Canada, bro? Tell us what your experience it's was. It's cold here. It's <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Did you hate it? Did you want to come? To this day, I still like every time winter comes, it's just, <laughs> it feels different. Dude. <laughs> it's, like, it's like a new level of, of coldness. Yeah. New level of, of Dude, hardness. winters are cold. Yeah. I but like, what did you think of, what did you think of the whole experience coming uh, to it? It's, it's pretty good. Yeah. Like, it, it has, uh, I love Canada because it has so much, so many, Opportunities, opportunities, especially for us immigrants. You know? yeah. We never grew up with, with a lot of resources, like yeah. going to school. The so art center, bro. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> so uh, the, having that, that, that ability to, you know, have access to good yeah. you know, education. Oh, yeah, so much, so much here that, nice. that the, Congo, the Congo doesn't have. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. bro. Yeah. But, but how did you like it? How, how have you liked it here in Canada so far? Uh, experiences, best moment. So far, so good. So but far, so when good. When I get rich, I'm not in Canada anymore, bro. I'm, uh, really? I'm out of here, yes. <laughs> I'm out of here. Okay, bro, yeah. we're going to move on quickly. Yeah. So how did you get into video production? Let's talk about that. When Were um, you doing it back in Congo? Were you doing it when you got here? No, actually, uh, when I got here, I was, you know, I was actually into sciences. Really? I was never interested into... Uh, were you going to school for science? Yeah. Okay. Um, and my initial dream was to actually become a doctor. Doctor. Anyway, that's a long story. Um, <laughs> we have time, bro. Yeah. <laughs> now, nah, but continue. Right. Um, so, I started off with, with, like, you know, just coming here. Um, when I got here, uh, there was this class that I took in high school. Yeah. It was called the media class. Media, media class. class. Never um, taken that class. Yeah, so there I, I used to take, um, what is it, like Photoshop classes, yeah. you know, just doing small video project with my friends yeah. in that class. And, Actually, know, I think I took a class kind of like that. Did, huh? It's like tech and, or it's called media classes. Yes, that's what And they that's teach you Photoshop. It. it might be called different. I think school. at our school it was like called tech, technology, something, something, something. Yeah, mine was called uh, media class. Yeah. Yeah, so we, we would even do, you know, the newspaper for the school. Oh, okay. And, you know, some it was all media school. production, media yeah, creation yeah, kind of thing. Right. And, um, and, then, and then it just kind of ticked for you? or it was No, actually. Then, then I graduated. I, I, I still, like, you know, had interest in science. Yeah. And I was taking, uh, you know, a lot of math, biology. Yeah. So after graduating, I went to 
the University of Ottawa, yeah. and I took a biochemistry program. So you were still going in the sciences. Yes, I was still going in the sciences. But that's the first time you, you know, were in were in that that environment of of media. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and after that class, it just it just fell it, off. Exactly. Yeah, it was subconscious. Exactly. Okay. So, um, and then uh, what else? I, uh, what happened in, in a university for yeah, you, bro? University, I did, you know, three <laughs> years with that, yeah, you know. Three um, years. Yeah, three years of okay. university, of yeah. chemistry, um, and it, it just it just hit me one day. Um, I, I started reading book. It's like I'm I'm a geek when it comes to business books. Yeah. And, and oh, pers- I love business books personal too. Personal help books. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they, there's this book that I read. It's called uh, Rich Dad, Poor, Poor Dad. Dad. Yeah. Um, so. Everything that I have at this moment, I owe it to, to that, that book. book. Yeah. yeah. So if I ever meet that guy one day, I, I think I've I never will. read the book, but I've hear, oh heard it's an amazing book. And and the funny thing is, I, I I recommend it to three of my friends. Yeah. And they all had the same reaction, like, "Yo, like we don't know what the hell we're doing in school. Like yeah, okay. we don't have no plans." But anyways, um, for, so from there. You were lost, kind of, at that point, or not really. I actually knew what I was doing because I wanted to become a doctor. Okay. Right? But then I realized it's too many years because after, um, after, after what is it? Um, so after university, it's, it's like four years of medical school, yeah. right? And then four to five more years into residency where you, you know, yeah, you get tr- actual training, yeah, before you become. So a it's fully like fifteen licensed. years of of become to become Pretty a doctor. Much, yeah, almost. Yeah. Yeah, so and you were like, much. fuck that. Fuck that man. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I'm out of here, bro. I'm out of here, man. Okay. okay. So, so then what happened? How did, how did you stumble into video then? Uh, so yeah, uh, when I was in university, my, one of my friends is, is, a, is, a, is a good artist. Yeah. Good artist. Um, he, he, he was going to do a, a video shoot and then he was like, yo, can you come help me on, on you know, just come behind the scene, just yeah. see how it goes. That, that's what he said? Yeah. <laughs> or did he just so want you, you know, in the video? You know, not really. Yeah. He didn't want me to be in the video. It's like when, you, when your homeboy is an artist and you're like, yo, I'm going to do a video shoot. And, oh, shit. Okay. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I, I know that. that excitement. Like, what could, like, sometimes I'll be watching videos like, okay, what is going on like behind the scene? How yeah, do yeah, the yeah, cameraman yeah. does that? Yeah, yeah. So I went there. Uh, it was actually a Rito on the roof. And this videographer came through. He started shooting. He had uh, a run-in. Right? Uh, with the Canon uh, camera, and you were like, "I want that." <laughs> I was like, I was looking at the kind of work he was doing, and it kind of reminded me of back in uh, high school what I was doing. And, in the media you know, class, the spark just went on. Actually, right? Yeah. yeah. And from there, I was like, you know what? Um, and and also like, I saw how much he was paying him. Okay. When my friend paid the VR, I'm like, oh shit, man, this is like. Yeah, this is an opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I could make easy money just doing this yeah. for, 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 for nothing. Right? Um, so, so, so you started doing it. And how did that process happen? Did you buy your camera? Did you already have a camera? Did you so, um, start doing work for free? Again, like, reading book helped me a lot at least to, to to provide me with the motivation that I needed to yeah. be able to be where I am today. Yeah. So um, He recommends the book, guys. <laughs> Check it out. Um, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I, sh- I, uh, I, after that, what I did was to buy a, a, a Canon T3i yeah. on Kijiji, actually. And it came with the... the kit lens? The, the kit lens yeah. with a small road mic uh, microphone. Yeah. And from there, I started shoot. I started shooting these small videos. Oh, you people. didn't even shoot music videos at the start. You just at the start, no. It was no. all just random videos. Just random videos. Um, I started like, what is it? Uh, you know, just reaching out to people. Hey, I do this and that. Okay, do you mind if I shoot for you for free? Yeah. You know, I started uh, even reaching out to models. Like, hey, because I'd be watching some YouTube videos like of these videographer doing video shit for models. Yeah. And I kind of like those too. Yeah. As I reach out to models and be like, hey, can I shoot a, shoot a video, just a cool project with you? Yeah. You know, and, and from there, I kept watching videos, like, especially like YouTube videos. Like instructional ones. Yeah. Um, and a lot of tutorials. He was educating himself, guys. You gotta educate. <laughs> YouTube got got a lot of hours in me. Right yeah. Now. Um, so, just kept 
kept watching, kept watching, kept going out. And this is where you are today? Making mistakes. This is where I am today. Damn, bro. Yeah. But you, you still got a lot to learn, but you seem like you've come a long way. And Yeah, but again, like the, the, work, the work that I used to do, you know, that started out being for free. Yeah. And then people started noticing my work. And I was like, hey, can we, how much do you charge? Yeah. And okay. And then I started charging them. And then from there, uh, you know, the money that was getting paid is the money that was financing other equipment, right? Yeah. So I will shoot, I get maybe $500, use that to buy, you know, a good light kit. And then from there, 1000 1000 used to buy, you know, a camera. And just, it went keep going up, yeah. up, 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 and up. So it's a cycle. You got to you gotta sure. slowly start for free, mm-hmm. if you have to start for free. And then once you have that example of work, and I, I've seen that too with my stuff is, you do all this work for free, and then when someone texts you and says how much you charge, right. they'll never know that yeah, it was for free, right? Exactly. So that's the thing. You can you can go out at your wilder streams, like don't charge them a million dollars, right. but like you can start charging people after they see what's possible. But if you have no example work, then you have to go for free, yeah, or else sure. people won't trust you. They won't trust you. Yeah, but um, <laughs> was there any influences along the, or people that helped you other than the rich dad, poor dad, like as far as um, video goes, like some, you know, Peter McKinnon, people like, I actually never watched Peter McKinnon. Yeah. But the, the, Who were the, the guys that really... The person that really, like, that I owe everything when it comes to video... Effect, Skills, vi- yeah. Just, like, video mindset is yeah. YC Imaging. YC like, Imaging, guy, check him out. Man, he's, like, my hero. <laughs> yes, he's my so hero. So he's from the start kind of thing? Was he the first video you stumbled upon? He's the first video I stumbled upon. And, the and last video. I'm that person that I don't like to watch too much. You do a lot more different people because I feel like that kind of it limits you in terms of like you, you feel like well my point is that like I just said okay I want to focus with just this person to just be my idol when it comes to videography you know and you know I implemented his techniques kind of did, did it my like you know modify them to make them my own yeah right and yeah, so YC Imaging, uh, Creative Ryan. You don't like watching more than one person, though? Because um, the thing is, I find, is if you watch multiple people... No, I, I, I do watch multiple people, yeah, okay. but I have one, one single person. Oh, yeah, person a main that, like, person, yeah. I always look up to. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, yeah. I agree. Obviously. Oh, yeah, I agree. Mm-hmm. I, I just think it's good to branch out to different people, because then you can pull in styles and make it your own, mm-hmm. but still have that main guy who, who knows what he's talking about. I agree. And especially YC Imaging is such a invader in the music video space right. people like max novak is eff- like effects driven like you know max novak right. um does a lot of effects tutorials and yc imaging is really the guy that shows you how to shoot music exactly videos, you know that, I mean? that's the reason why i like him because yeah. it's a, a specific niche you yeah, know what I mean? other people they just throw it at you and like oh we did this 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 they don't show you the behind the scenes yeah me i'm i'm like if i just just don't tell me anything you just show me the behind the scenes like, yeah just show me how it's done. done yeah i'm good <laughs> i know how you got i it. agree if bro i, I think the behind the scenes, scenes is the key because if you can know how it's done then you can figure it out right mm-hmm. it's always like you know people showing you this work and this just show them the set behind the camera what he was actually doing and then just copy that movement you know what i mean exactly and i think yc imaging does that really well and actually i got inspiration from yc imaging because i'm gonna start i just got a camera grid i'm gonna attach a gopro to it because he you know he does that yeah and he he films himself so then you can and mine's a 360 gopro too so you can get the full body in it and then people can see what i'm doing to get the shot and I think that's 100% I agree behind the scenes is the best way to learn mm-hmm. video production if you can see how a set in Hollywood looks mm-hmm. then you're then you understand if you know you know you still have to know the terms and things like that and right, what's going right, on right, and right, right. oh there's lighting over there and things like that but if right. you understand that behind the scenes is the best way to, to yeah, learn but we're gonna move on um, do you think learning First of all, how did you learn? I know you learned through video and stuff like that, and that's mm-hmm. how you, you advance your skills. But do you think this is a viable method for everyone? Or do you think it's, do you think you learn, you know, you could learn in other ways? Do you understand my question? Do you think you could learn video production in other ways? Or do you think, what, how, how do you learn video production? And do you think that's the best way to learn? YouTube is the best way to learn for everyone? Or do you think some people should go to school? Some people should go, you know, just follow, like, you know, shadow people right, who do it right, right. do you understand what i mean kind yeah, of thing yeah, i do um i think the What's best your opinion on that first of all like you know you, be, you gotta have the passion man yeah like, it's just 
you really need to have that drive to to learn to, to want to learn yeah right and then then once you, you you have that and other things automatically comes to you yeah right okay um, like uh what is it do, do you want to change the space no 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 it's fine it's fine <laughs> do you want to so you so you so you just kind of say the passion is what drives so learning. the passion drives you and then from there your brain just does its magic it's like okay yo go watch this video how so it, it, and from there it's like now once you have the passion yeah. and you watch something like say a music video yeah you're like okay how did they do that yeah okay then now your brain is gonna start thinking okay let me type in in the in in, in the search on YouTube. Like, yeah. How did did this director shoot this music video? Yeah. Behind the scene, and then from there you you start you know learning, and and it's just like it open it's opening up doors to other sources. Like okay, yeah. he used this camera, he used this such like uh, filter to get this effect. Yeah. Right. So learning really, um, I sure. think it's you all from you passion. Yeah. You can, you don't you, you don't need to go to. A, <laughs> I think you need to go to film school. Yeah, it, it's funny because I I just recently I went to uh, there was a uh, because I'm I'm also trying to branch out into actually filming, like f film like a short film. Right? Oh, so okay, myself, yeah, short right? filming, yeah. And I'm I'm writing scripts at the moment. Yeah. So, and we, the way I am is like if I want to get into something, I need to know everything there is to know about it. Yeah. Like there is, if I need to read, if I need to. To watch videos, I have to do that before I fully commit myself into it. Yeah. Right. So I uh, I signed up for this. It was called Vancouver uh, Film School. Oh, yeah. And uh, I, I I signed up for that. Like like the 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 school itself. Explain no, it, it a was, bit. It was. Uh, I didn't get into detail uh, for it. it. It was an info session like where they they, they kind of like give you the pitch. Oh, okay. Right. To to to, to show you to what me. it is. Yeah. Okay. Right. Um. So I went there. And man, it was pretty sick. It was cool, right? But I, it was we, here in Ottawa. Yeah, in Ottawa. Okay, okay. So they came. They're doing a tour. Yeah. In different different areas. So they came and 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 at the end, one parent asked, "Okay, how much does this cost?" It's like, oh, it's like thirty thousand a year. I was like, what? <laughs> Actually, I, and I'm not lying to you. Was there stuff that you year. you didn't know that well that well, they were there pitching? Is, there is stuff that I know, like you know, just visual effects. Yeah. Right? And 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 you know, the 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 uh, alumni people, they they've been like you know, received a lot of credit in in, in recent films, yeah. like Marvels, you yeah. know, uh, Universal, Disney, and whatnot. But like. I mean, thirty thousand is a lot for one year, and and the amount of yeah. things you can get with the thirty thousand. Oh my god! If you relate the amount of money you could spend um, using that money from university, like thirty thousand. First of all, you can start by buying five thousand dollars worth of assets. I could get a red right there. Okay, you could get a red. Even fifteen thousand. Yeah. I could get a red. You could get a red. <laughs> you could get a red if you want. You could get. Five thousand dollars worth of assets, which are so good to have, just over like templates. You just throw it on right. stock video. Right. You could buy lighting gear. You could buy microphones. You can right. buy, and not even just gear. You could also just get mini courses because there's so many mini courses. Like you know, people like Peter Walbeck. Or I, I don't know exactly if I'm saying his name right, but like different video courses showing you what they're teaching in film school but just more concentrated right so right, i think right. i i do agree i think it's 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 better to depending depending i'm mm. not going to say for everyone because i the thing is i find is i don't want to dismiss film school mm. if i haven't been because right. you never know right you never know what they could teach but for the price tag you know just you don't know what it what it's going to be like yeah because the thing is like i'll be honest with you everything they teach you it's somewhere out there for free yeah, you just gotta find it. That's the thing. It's I on YouTube. I agree, it's, bro. It's every like it's just you can literally find it. Like and you just have to do your searching, really. Right. Yeah. You just gotta do the search because thirty thousand. There's I not one thing that yeah. That. There's one thing. There's not one thing the the perf the professor can keep away from the internet, especially nowadays. People go into their class and be like, hey, I learned this today at film class, like on a little vlog, you know? Right. There, the piece of information is out you now. You got it. So you can get it for free on YouTube instead of having to buy that course. I think what school is, it just puts all the information in a convenient learning spot right. for you. The and that's what it is. The best way to learn is just to just try. Try. 
Try and error. That's the best way to learn, yeah. man. Okay, bro. We're going to move on here. Um, so you have any tips for people starting a production company? And also you could say some mistakes you've made, if you've made any mistakes. Or have you, you felt that dope quality productions has been a pretty smooth ride so far? As far as, you know, charging or like, you know, choosing the right clients. It hasn't been a smooth ride. <laughs> <laughs> you get, you know, artists. One piece of the advice that I want to I wanna, I wanna, share. Um, give to people is yeah. that you know f s don't look at the money right because if you're in for the money you'll be disappointed a lot yeah right Th there are cases where you know i was shooting and i wasn't getting not even a penny for like four months yeah you know but i kept going out and shoot just do a lot of videos Right. But you didn't care. I didn't care. It, it wasn't an it was issue fun. to me. To this point, to this day, right, it's not an issue to me. Like, like I don't care if I get paid or don't get paid. I just, I love it so much that, yeah. you know, the money is not a problem. Yeah. Right? But that being said, you know, you come to a point where now you have to rely on, on you know, to pay your bills. Yeah, yeah. This is your full time thing. Yeah. Right? So it's one thing to understand that, like, you have to value your work yourself first right and then other people value your work and 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 what i mean is like you, you you get sometimes these clients that hit you up and they say you know hey we want a music video and you say okay uh, how much do you want i mean how much like, they, they ask you like how much do you do, you, do you? at least they say like okay we have three hundred dollars and then you look at the, like at least for me when somebody comes to me and they say hey want a music video we have three hundred dollars i stop even responding to them yeah right because you just stop responding yeah, to them? literally <laughs> okay. i stop responding because i know my value like yeah i've been i've done this for like for two years maybe three years but right? just learning how to do video yeah and you from one year to the third you you're building value to your production right yeah and and that also translate into how much you worth. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And for me, like for example, like just know how much you worth and charge people that, and only focus on those that are willing to pay you that much. Right. If if you if if you you shoot a music video for maybe three thousand, attract clients that are worth three thousand. Right. Yeah. If somebody else comes to you and say hey, one thousand. Say no, bro. Listen. I'm sure you, you can find somebody else that can do your budget, but me, I charge this much and this is what I provide and, you know, I provide great experience and I make sure that, I make sure that everything, maybe we, we discuss in the video, yeah. I mean, the concept when I, I get done, delivered on time, yeah. right? you get revision, all that, so have them understand why you work that much. Yeah, explain it to them so they understand. And, yeah. and the funny thing that someone actually told me today, and I'm going to say it real quickly because it might help you, is you have to think, and this is what he said, is people always think of their value in time. So they're like, okay, this, you know, this video is going to take this much time, do this much, you know, this much time of editing, and that's how much it's going to be, right? Right. Yeah. But what he he does travel videos, so yeah. it relates more to that. But you have to think of the value of the video, right? So if they spend fifteen hundred on you, I'm going to use the example he used to do a travel video for a tour company, right? Oh, yeah. They're going to put that tour company, they're going to put that video on yeah. social media, and let's say the tour every tour is six hundred dollars, right? Yeah. That video over the span of two years will get let's say a hundred people to do, end up doing the tour. Right. So that that video generated that company a hundred times 60 so sixty thousand mm -hmm. right. dollars sixty thousand dollars right 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 yet right. they're paying fifteen hundred for oh. the video right. so like that's just something you have to think about is the, the value of the content in in the terms of what it's going to do for the person mm -hmm. not how much time you're going to take to yeah. do it so and and there's the things like there is like the, the, don't don't get fooled by these people telling you oh you're not gonna get clients. There is money for oh. every single person. Yeah. And especially like the video production, there is money for everyone. And I wanna I wanna also say one more thing. Yeah. Like don't 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 get don't get fooled by these artists when they say, Oh bro, we on the come up, you know, uh just 
if we go up you go up too like for me if you tell me that i'm like bro listen i don't care if you're on the come up or not like i'm good where i am i'm on the come up on my own yeah right so if you gotta succeed you succeed on your own I, i'm good yeah right and you know um so it's all a marketing thing and i i have that too to, tonight actually i have a, a call because i i wanted to do a one-off video because mm. i haven't done a music video in a while so mm. i have a one-off video and, mm. and you know these guys are small right and they, they don't have that big of a budget and everything so i'm like you know i'm trying to compensate and tell them what they can get with the yeah. amount of money they have right, right, right. and it's just a one-off thing so obviously like i wouldn't usually do this but i'm like you know like whatever like let me let me try this out right and also i, th- I kind of know the guy um mm. but the thing is if if they're going to try to swindle me and say, oh, we don't have that much, you know, it's like, no, dude, business is business. And yeah, business if you're an artist business. and you think that you can just swindle your way, dude, you're not ready for the real business world. Because no. cause out there, when you're signing your $40,000 contracts, if you ever do, I doubt it, but not doubt it, but if you ever do, it's not like, oh, hey, can you take 10 grand off this contract? No, dude. And, and, and that's a mindset that, you know, I think the should should should, should kind of try to like keep away from yeah. themselves and i'll give you an example right let's say you say yes i want to shoot maybe like say okay now nah, i'll be able to shoot music video for 300 yeah okay let's that's cool now 300 budget type of music video one thing that you need to understand is like okay first you would get a lot of clients that's true right but with each individual client you will have less time of creativity to to be able to like Ex- showcase your your, your 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 talent yeah, and grow showcase your growth right because if you're shooting like say in one month if you shoot like 15 music video for 300 dollars it's possible to shoot 15 but let's say 10 10 music video for 300 dollars right um so 10 music video and there editing you just you 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 don't have enough time to like edit every like to fully edit each single video in a way that's like oh like oh shit this is good this is nice yeah like you're just gonna cut 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 thing, done yeah deliver it right creativity you lose creativity and and and, and second like your work just look the same right there is never anything different from because you don't have that time to 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 rebrand your your work yeah um and and now compare it to me, who's, for example, right, like, let's say I shoot a music video for just 3,000, a single music video, right? And I just do five music video in one month, Yeah. right? So five times three, right? Five times 3,000, that's like 15,000 almost, Yeah. right? Just five music video. One, I have creativity. I, I have ways to build my sets. I have time to really color grade my footage. I have time to really add those effects because, you know, and then and, and compared to, to you doing 10 music videos for $300, so three times 10, that's you making 3000 for 10 music video in one month, and I'm making at least like 15000 for just five music video. So just put that into your mindset and just get, realize like, it's no the amount of video you do. It's really about like how much you're worth and how much each work can 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 really help you grow and can help you get you get you more work, right? So yeah. Okay. No, no. I hundred percent. I agree with you. No, no, no. no, no I, I think we're gonna leave it at that. And we're gonna move on to some more technical stuff. So, go to performance shot for a music video. We're gonna get technical here. See if we can help some people who are into music videos or trying yeah. to get into videos. What is your go-to, you know, staple? Do you have a staple staple sh- performance shot that you'll you'll do in a music video? Uh, staple meaning like, like you know something used very often. Okay. You know like just like you know a, a slow walking shot like. Um, do you know like, what I mean? Like kind so of? first of all, before like I even decide, okay, what is it that I'm gonna use? Yeah. I have to listen. Like every artist, if they hit me, I'm like, hey, we want a music video, this and that. We, we need a concept. Yeah. Okay. I always ask. Okay, can I hear the song? Okay. It's the song that tells me what equipment that I'm gonna use. Okay. So, for example, if it's a slow song, I know there's no shaky. It's just gonna be stable. Yeah. Like extremely stable. Um, if it's like a bumpy trap song, like you can, you know. Yeah. Hit, bump your head to bump it. Bump your head to it. There, you need some shaky footage. Yeah. Okay. Right. So. Yeah. 
So it depends. I guess it does depend, it on, depends on, on, the, on. And if it's a slow song, I would usually use like the Ronin. Yeah. Right. Uh, or my slider to just get that smooth movement. Yeah. And if it's a shaky um, song, I just I mean like your hand trap. Yeah. Handheld is is good enough. It's the way to go. Yeah, don't don't make it too much. That way he won't. Don't make it too shaky, so people don't actually like. <laughs> you need to actually. Yeah. You know, just. I put an example that don't do like this. this. <laughs> don't do whatever is coming on screen right now. Don't don't shoot a video like that. Okay, bro. What's your favorite set you've ever been on? Um, and also your worst set, like bad. Have you ever had some bad clients or bad sets? Oh yeah. It's just become yeah. a disaster. And you ever had some ones where it's like. Damn, bro, this is so smooth, or this is such a sexy uh, shit set. The best set is the set where uh, I have creative control, like, you know, the artist, I love it when the artist just hands me over, like, hey, listen, I want a music video, build a concept, and make it happen. Yeah. And we just go from there and understand what they need. Yeah. Right first, and then I add, incorporate my idea into the, the concept. And yeah. They just say, hey, just do it yourself. Yeah. Right. That I love. That's my best, my best. And the worst one is like when 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 you 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 decide okay we're gonna do this concept yeah and you show up on set and the artist is like oh no what if we do this oh no let's do this no don't do that like they start changing up yeah, the concept changing up that the concept. messes you up changing up the po the pre production yeah the pre production yeah, yeah. and I, I think it's good to have certain ideas but if you're completely changing the whole concept of it like you know you can change the angle it's not that big of a deal but. If you're really like saying no, we're, we're completely cutting out this set, or I don't want that, then it does become an annoyance. And I've, I've actually dealt with that very recently, where was, we have some people like I was oh, on, yeah. a, I was doing BTS, and oh, yeah. some dudes just there, and they're just trying to take control, trying to take creative control. And we're like, you hired, well, like you didn't hire me. I'm doing BTS, but you hired these people to put your dream to life. That's what you are. You're hiring them for their video services, for their creative ideas, mm -hmm. for their directing, for ev all the skills they have. Their creative their creative uh, thoughts mm -hmm. yet you think you're going to come in here and, and completely you know waste first of all waste your money because you know okay we'll give you what you want but right. at the same time like you're wasting your money because you're you're not getting the, the highest quality product and exactly. hiring us for what we hire exactly um, but have you already had any sorry sorry <laughs> have you ever dealt with any bad clients then and uh, yeah, every day <laughs> How do, you, how do you deal with your bad clients, bro? The, the thing is, like... Um, is there different types of bad clients, too? Yeah, so, like, so for me, really, I, I, decide, I, like, I found the formula, right? Yeah. But I love videography so much yeah. that, like, I want to be able to have fun on set. I want to be able to have fun. Just the process of thinking, the process of shooting, the process of dealing with, peop with people, right? I want to have fun. Yeah. And that's why I'm doing video. Okay, and anything that tries to take away that fun, that happiness from me, yeah. To me, it's kind of like, like yo, I'm gonna run away from you as much as I can. Yeah, okay. Like I will run. Like if you're a client and you start uh, doing this and that, things that are Is not in off? the agreement. Oh, okay. I'm like, listen, hey, listen, like here's your money. Yeah. Take it. Go hire somebody else. I'm good. Just, just how I, just how I am. I, I try to avoid any conflict with, 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 with the clients. With the clients. Yeah. And, and like, for it me, seems you such a headache too. Yeah, I don't, I don't like too much headaches. Like, I want to have fun. So, I, I don't, I don't want to let you come in and, and make my job worse. And, yeah. And not love doing it. Yeah. No, I just go find somebody else. I'm good. Yeah. Okay. Right. Do but, you, but there is clients that are like that sometimes. It's yeah. Just, you just need to say, you know what, I want to deal with. So it. you you, you would choose you usually choose pushing them away over getting the money though, or is there ever some moments where like you need you need some money, you don't have enough for rent, or and you do take on bad clients. Have you ever been in that situation where you don't have the choice? So that's the other thing I, I was saying. It's it's all about mindset, right? Yeah. To me, I told myself this, right? No matter what happens, no matter whether my bills are due yeah no matter if i'm sleeping outside no matter if if they're kicking me out of the house yeah don't you ever 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 shoot a music video less than this price like i said that to, my mindset i mentally just put into my yeah. head but right? for for music videos that are higher than that price and they're bad clients that you don't want to deal with do you still sometimes deal with it just you know because you need the money 
because I know I, I know some people who do that where they you got to deal with the clients at the start you know not necessarily at the start but no but because the thing is like the, 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 the disagreement might come in maybe after the shoot or okay. before the shoot it's, if it's before the shoot and I know okay this person will give me a hard time yeah I'm like no I'm done no matter the price no matter the price okay if this person is like when when it's during the shoot yeah or after the shoot right I'd be like, I, you'll, if, you'll if, finish if, the, if, the yeah. Project. If I did the shoot, right? You just won't work with them again. No, okay. never. Yeah, I might even say, okay, let's work together. And if 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 somehow they end up, you know, hassling me and this and yeah, that, yeah, right? I'm like, okay, this is a learning pro, uh, learning, uh, uh, learning, uh, learning experience. Pro- experience. Yeah, I'm done with you. I'll okay. never work with you again. Yeah, yeah, but but again, this is supposed to be fun, man. It's not just about the money. Yeah. No, you, I told you. I, I like I said before. If it, if it, if it, you're going in for the money, you just it's never. You're never gonna enjoy it. You're never gonna enjoy and it. Why do something that you can't enjoy? Yeah. Why work with someone that you cannot stand? Why work with somebody that like say in the editing process make you feel like shit? It's like you send him the footage and they tell you, okay, change this. And and they send them back the footage. Oh, change this. They keep changing, changing. It's like you're getting treated like like trash. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Do you are you worth that because of the money? No. No. Exactly. It's just dude, it's just having that understanding of like, okay, I'm a human being. This is how much I'm worth, and no matter what, I'm not gonna let anyone push me around. Right. Yeah. Okay, so bro. If you're in for the money, then yes, you you'll get pushed around. Yeah. Everywhere. If you're in for the money, you're gonna get pushed around. So don't, so go in for the passion. Go in for passion. the drive. Mm-hmm. We're gonna wrap this up. I have a couple lightning round questions. It's actually just two questions, mm-hmm. and it's about gear because usually we don't talk too much about gear, but right. you know, gear is always fun to talk about as a filmmaker. So, what mm-hmm. is your camera setup? Your go-to camera setup right now. And what is your dream setup? Even though I already know what your dream setup is. And I was thinking about this when I was coming here. I was like, I know exactly what this guy's going to say. But let's start with your go-to camera setup. What is your main setup right now? So right now is like, uh, I have, uh, my setup is just like the GH5. GH5, classic. That's such a good camera. With the Sigma. 18 to 35 lens. 1.8? Yeah, 1.8. We have the same lens, bro. Actually, I get 1.2. How with, uh, speed booster? With, yeah, um, the, 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 the how's the one point two on it? It's super good, bro. Yeah? Like, uh, you get that bouquet. Oh, a hundred percent. I've never, I've never used a one point two, but isn't it hard to focus? You um, use autofocus. No, I, then uh, and the thing is, like, GS five sucks with, with autofocus. So I know, I, I know my distance, and that's the other thing I'm trying to do is like to actually start doing uh, tutorials to just show people how to. Oh yeah, hundred percent. That's what I'm doing too. Uh, we can talk. We can talk about this after because yeah, we don't really have time on the podcast. But <laughs> I'll record it for, as an extra side episode. Yes, yeah, so um, that's my setup, and I use uh, well with the GH5. It goes with like the, the Ronin. Yeah. M, Ronin S. M. Uh, M. Yeah, uh, I'm getting the S soon. I, I, I have like the the the, the um, It's like more like a Zen crane. Okay. Uh, but I, I don't. I, my weight is pretty, it's getting more. heavy. Yeah. So, so you need to upgrade. Yeah. Um, and your 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 dream setup. Oh, my dream is, is a red. Man. A red yeah. red dragon. Red or, dragon. That's not no, no red, red epic. Red actually. That's that's my dream. Bro, I've, I've, honestly, my I've never really camera. done research into cinema cinema cameras, which is funny, but they are nice. I will be honest. And but I find there's so many buttons on it. I would never like you'd really have to because that's one thing. Like I'd really have to search on how to use those cameras. Yeah, because they're, they're completely different than DSLRs. Okay, like the thing is like you before you can even start thinking of getting those, you yeah. need to really master. Oh, hundred percent. Lighting, master. hundred percent. You know, yeah. Colors, master. You know. But they do. This is one thing that. Um, my the guy again today said and i'm going to repeat it here because i think it was a very strong point he made is i don't think you should like gear limit your creativity but when it comes to clients gear does open up higher Um, paying clients trust me trust me you know what i mean trust me if you it's like you said with the red when we first met is Mm. some people want the red some people want that quality and they'll only pay you if you have that quality so no matter how good your creative ambition is sometimes Mm. They just can't look past that. And unless exactly. you can really, really push it mm-hmm. and really make an effort, 
you're usually stuck. So like if you have a really low, low, low light camera, mm -hmm. or sorry, a bad low light camera, you just can't shoot clubs. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's just, you're not, like, it's going to be too grainy. Mm. It's going to look, you can shoot better on your iPhone. And at that point, like, no matter how good your storytelling, how good your shots are, right. if it's just a, a clobberness of grain mm -hmm. and people can't even see the detail, mm -hmm. then you got no storytelling. Yeah, it's slowing it, your market and yeah. trying try to find equipment. That oh, yeah, using that. the gear that you have mm -hmm. and using it to the limit. Because you can, people can push so much more out of the gear. Is one thing I'll say. Yeah. This red, this this EOS R that I have, I could be shooting, you know, twenty thousand dollar videos with it. It shoots ten bit log, four K. Like, what else you really need from from it? It, it? it can shoot amazing images, especially if you have good lighting and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's the funny thing I always tell you is like with the bigger camera, bro, you you have more bargaining power when it comes to design. Oh, oh yeah, if true. If you tell the clients, yo, I charge like ten thousand, and you show them the camera you use, like, okay, here. Take it. <laughs> I will say, I think it. I think it relates for the higher paying clients, for the lower paying clients, and certain, and actually certain higher paying clients, they don't know what the fuck it is. Yeah. They don't know what a red is. They don't know they what don't a, know. an Alexa is. Mm -hmm. So I think it. They that thing about the bargaining is like, yeah, it can work on some clients, but some clients don't know what the fuck you're talking about. You know, exactly. maybe they know 4K. If you if you spit 4K or 4K, 6K, they they're happy. They you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, cause that's that's marketed. But like an Alexa and log, they don't know what log is. They don't know what shooting raw is. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah so so we're gonna wrap it up here. Um, you can plug yourself or anything, and also let us know the future of you. <laughs> what what what's the big plan for the coming uh, for the coming um, winter? Are you gonna hibernate? Are you gonna run away? Or uh, <laughs> Uh, Are you going on a trip? The winter, um, that's when I'm actually trying to... Um, start shooting shorts? Yeah, uh, just start shooting my short film and also... Um, do you have any plans? You don't have to have plans, don't worry, bro. No, I do I do have plans. I'm, I'm trying to, you know... Um, and and, and like, I'm trying to... Well, we're trying to come up with uh, like a record company now. Oh, you're doing some music now, too. Yeah. yeah respect. And, and, and it's crazy because, you know... Is doing video that open up opportunities to other things. Oh, I agree too. Because I, I like I didn't start doing music, but I started playing guitar, mm -hmm. recording my guitar, and I would have never done that if I'd never, you know, got into podcasting and audition and podcasting linked from video. So like, it's funny, and I agree with you. It's funny how you, yeah. you start different things, and uh, we should make a track together. Just letting you know. <laughs> um, do you want to do you want to plug yourself or anything? Or are you good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, I want to plug myself. Okay, plug yourself. Make sure y'all follow me on IG. You know, B N W A M I S S I. Instagram.com slash. You gonna put that? Yeah, oh, I'll throw it in. Do uh, yeah. you have a YouTube or anything? Uh, my YouTube right now, not at the moment. I'm working on rebranding myself and okay. actually create more content yeah. before I can release. Do you have them. any music videos dropping shortly? Yes, I have two music videos. Do you um, want to plug them or no? No, no. Yet, he's not going to plug them. Released. Okay. Right. So the, the can you say the title actually, though? Wait. Yeah, uh, one is uh, is uh, called ba Bal Exot. Bal Exot. I don't even know how to pronounce. It. It's a French song. Um, the other one is uh, <laughs> Underground. On the ground, uh, yeah, this guy named uh, John Conscious, and this super crazy artist, man. Stay tuned, guys. Thank you for tuning into Shutter Talk. I hope you guys enjoyed, learned something, got some value from it. Uh, yeah. See you guys in the next one. Uh, peace, peace. Peace. <laughs>